Hello everybody, this is Dr. Tani Issa, Professor of Pathology. I make these videos for all medical students. Hope someone may find it helpful. We talked about history and the epidemiology of tuberculosis, and today we are going to talk about etiology of the disease. So, etiology of tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis bacteria. And predisposing factors are tuberculosis flourish wherever there is poverty, crowding, and chronic debilitating illness. In USA, tuberculosis is mainly a disease of elderly, the urban, poor, and people with AIDS. TB HIV facts. Individual infected with HIV has 20 to 30 fold increased risk of developing tuberculosis. And this is a double trouble. HIV is the strongest risk factor for the progression of a latent TB infection to active tubercul tuberculous infection. Infection with HIV makes people susceptible to the rapidly progressive form of tuberculosis, which is almost always fatal. So tuberculosis is a leading killer of HIV-positive people. See, those with co-infection with HIV and tuberculosis are dying. They are saying goodbye. They are dying because TB is the leading killer of those people with HIV. Other risk factors for tuberculosis include diabetes mellitus, Hodgkin lymphoma, chronic lung disease, particularly silicosis, and chronic renal failure, malnutrition, alcoholism, immunosuppression. And these are the risk factors. Uh, anything which lower the immunity or cause debilitating condition. Positive organism is mycobacterium tuberculosis. We have two species of mycobacterium tuberculosis that can infect humans. Mycobacterium tuberculosis hominis and mycobacterium tuberculosis bovis. Mycobacterium tuberculosis hominis means the infection will be from human to human. So uh, the reservoir is human being and it will infect another human being. And mycobacterium bovis means infection from cows to human. Mycobacterium avium and mycobacterium intracellulari, these occur in patients with AIDS. And mycobacterium avium and mycobacterium intracellulari are separate species, but the infections they cause are so similar, so they are referred to as mycobacterium avium intracellulari complex, or MAC. MAC is common in soil, water, dust, and domestic animals and birds. Clinically significant infection with MAC is uncommon except among people with AIDS and those with low number of CD4 lymphocytes. Mycobacterium tuberculosis basic characteristics. Mycobacterium tuberculosis hominis is a cylinder delicately beaded rods, averaging 4 micron in length. See, it is delicate uh, rods, and it is beaded, delicately beaded. This is a, a smear of pulmonary lesion. Shows cylinder, delicately beaded. You can see it delicately beaded rods. Mycobacterium bacilli consists of a protein fraction called tuberculoprotein and a small polysaccharide fraction and covered by a capsule of lipid and wax. Mycobacterium have a unique waxy cell wall composed, composed of mycolic acid, and this makes it difficult to stain with gram stain. However, once the stain has penetrated the cell wall, it is also difficult to be removed and uh, they resist decolorization by mixture of acid and alcohol. 
and this means it is acid fast. So what is the meaning of acid fast? Acid fast means they will retain stain even on treatment with a mixture of acid and alcohol. Please remember that acid fast means they will retain stain even on treatment with a mixture of acid and alcohol. Mycobacteria are weakly gram positive when stained with gram stain, but it is very difficult to stain with gram. This is a scanning electron micrograph of a number of gram-positive mycobacterium tuberculosis. This mycobacterium appears 2 to 4 micrometer in length and 0.2 to 0.5 micrometer in width. The stain of a choice is Zeal Nelson stain. So please remember that the stain of a choice is Zeal Nelson stain and it stains the bacilli uh, with the red stain, the bacilli appear as red rods with zeal Nelson stain. Please remember that the stain of choice is zeal Nelson stain and it stains the bacilli red. Mycobacteria can also be stained with oramine and viewed with fluorescence microscopy in which acid fast bacilli now appear as glowing yellow rods. See, this is the mycobacterium tuberculosis, and this when we stain with oramine, and this gives glowing, beautiful, glowing yellow rods. This is beautiful, glowing yellow rods uh, of mycobacterium tuberculosis with oramine stain. And this method is easier to use to screen for mycobacteria, and is the method routinely used in sputum specimen sent to the laboratory. Mycobacteria are strict aerobes and require high level of oxygen. This may explain their tendency to cause disease in the subapical portions of the lungs. Mycobacteria are non-motile, non-spore forming rods, and mycobacteria are very virulent, resistant organisms. They may remain viable in wet sputum particles for months and in dried sputum for weeks. They may even remain viable in calcified lesions for long periods of time. Mycobacteria do not produce exotoxin or endotoxin, but the pathological changes in tuberculosis depend upon the antigenicity of its tuberculoprotein component. Zeal Nelson stained mycobacterium culture specimen but means this uh, bacterial cells have a strong tendency to stick together. This is computer-generated image, very beautiful image of mycobacterium tuberculosis. It illustrates, uh, this is the, uh, uh, this illustration of Zeal Nelson stain. Uh, this uh, mycobacteria beaded, this is delicately beaded mycobacteria takes the red stain, very beautiful. The reagents used are carbofoxine and acid alcohol, and the counter stain is toxic. It is replaced nowadays by uh, methylene blue. This is acid fast bacilli, stained red, and the background here is green, but it can be replaced by methylene blue. Mode of transmission. It is airborne or aerosol means person-to-person -person transmission of airborne organisms from an active case to a susceptible host. When people with active disease cough, sneeze, speak, sing, or spit, they propel the TB germs in the air. And a person needs to inhale a few of these germs to get infected. The second mode of transmission is ingestion. Ingestion of milk contaminated by bovine mycobacterium bacilli. In developed countries, disease control in dairy herds and pasteurization of milk have eradicated this mode of transmission. But this mode of, of transmission is still present in underdeveloped countries that have tuberculous dairy cows and unpasteurized milk. 
In the United States of America, tuberculosis is now considered to be due to human bacilli unless proved otherwise. The third mode of transmission is skin inoculation and it is called inoculation tuberculosis. Cutaneous tuberculosis is a relatively uncommon form of extrapulmonary tuberculosis, even in countries such as India and China, where TB is still common. Cutaneous outbreaks are rare. It is less than 0.1%. This is a case of TB varicose acutis. It is an inoculation tuberculosis, but it occurs by direct inoculation of TB into the skin in someone who has been previously infected with mycobacteria tuberculosis. This means that this type of infection occur in people who has been previously infected with mycobacterial tuberculosis. And it presents as a purplish or brownish red warty uh, growth, as you see here, red warty growth. And lesion often occur on the knee, elbow, hands, feet, and buttocks. And lesions may persist for years and may clear even without treatment. Skin inoculation can also occur during handling infected meat or dressing a tuberculous lesion, particularly if there is aberrated or punctured skin, this especially in high prevalence area. Now we finished with history of tuberculosis and epidemiology of tuberculosis and etiology of tuberculosis. And in the next video, we are going to talk about pathogenesis of tuberculosis. Thank you so much.